Hello, sir. What are you doing today? Everything's good? All right, excellent. Sir, and you? I'm doing excellent. Thanks for asking. All right, so as I said last class, we're going to practice the freehand sketching and now put it to an actual C6 start question. So I gave you an opportunity last class to take 10 seconds, memorize the drawing, right? And now today we're going to complete it in AutoCAD. So camera's on for me and let's begin. All right, I'm going to screen share for you now. Um, me beginning the drawing for you, going through the steps, and I want you to load up your AutoCAD so we can begin. I'm coming, sir. Give me a minute. All right, sure. In the meanwhile, let me just take you through the steps now. When you're in AutoCAD, the very first thing you need to do is open what? It starts with T. Open your, your template. Open your template. There we go. Excellent. So it's loading up. In the meanwhile, let me just turn on my side camera so I can still see you guys. Right, there we go. One, two. And then I'm going to put three as you. One second. Okay, excellent. Right, everybody's ready to begin? Let me put, so let me minimize you guys and put you all the way down here. Here we go. Okay, awesome. Okay, let's begin. So the very first thing, the very first thing was to open the template. There we go. And now that we have the template opened, okay, let me see if I can drag this screen a little bit further for you. Yes, I can. Okay, beautiful. Here we go. Can everybody see the screen now? All right, the next thing you should do is go on your construction layer, turn it on, so turn on the light bulb, there you go, and you're always going to see this drawing come up. That's a test if your AutoCAD is working. Good. So let's begin now with the first image. Everybody remember this image now? It says, shaft support assembly. And what I've gone ahead and done, I've taken even closer images of each component so you can see the measurements together. All right, let me zoom out. We have Josh. So this is the assembly of everything. And then these are its individual parts. So the only thing you really need... Good morning, Josh. Good morning, Josh. How are you doing? So here is the overall working drawing of all of the orthographic parts and then now here is the assembled part so we're going to sketch this now in isometric all right i saw the request let me just log you in one second okay there we go approve excellement is there a password you can give me so i don't have to bother you yeah um tell you what remind me after class to give you a, a set of passwords all right okay mm -hmm. Okay, let's begin. So the very first thing, we're on our AutoCAD. We first need to know the width and the length of the object. Okay? So let's look on the plan view. Alright, and I want Corey now to help me with this. Corey, this distance right here, from this end all over to this end, what's that distance? Let me zoom in for you. Might be a bit blurry. But what's that distance? It is 128 or 125. Let me use a clearer image. Let me use a clear image just to show you. Because remember, this is pulled directly from c and I'm not able to actually screw it. Yeah? I did this already. Did yeah, we did it already, but now we're doing it in um, isometric. So we did it in orthographic, but I wanted to now put it in isometric projection so others can visualize the 3D object. All right? So Corey was right, it's 125. All right, so the distance going across is 125 and the distance going over is 100. All right, so that's now telling us the width and the length. All right, now with this measurement, I'm just gonna quickly flash it on the screen again. Can everybody see it? I'm not gonna open it any further, but this is your isometric drawing. 
all right this originates from this orthographic projection and we're going to complete it now in today's class so let's do the first thing we're going to now draw the base of 100 and of 125 sorry and 100 going for um in the width so let's load up our d settings d settings all right now my computer might be a bit slow because i'm running a million things there we go i'm going to turn the polar tracking on put it to a degree of 30. turn your midpoint and your quadrant on there we go excellent and now we're ready to begin so the first thing I'm going to draw our line and how much did we say is going in this direction 125 to 100 125 to 100 125 alright here we go is our construction box finished what do we need to add to this construction box? So we've added length. Okay, so 125 on what? 125 by 100. So, okay. just to make clear, we've added the length and the width, but what measurement are we forgetting to make it a full construction box? It starts with H. I'm not going to tell you. It's a vertical component to our object. Height. 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 Exactly. So to find the height, Let's go on our drawing now, but we can't use the plan view to find the height. We must use the front view. All right. So to look at the height, we're going to quickly now look at the front view and we get to realize that the front view has a height of 76 plus 26 plus 110. And I'm going to ask Jeffrey, Jeffrey's beside me. Okay, Jeffrey. I mean, okay, Google. What's 76 plus 26 plus 110? The answer is 212. Alright, 212. Excellent. Alright, so we're going to go vertically. 212. Here we go. 212. Let's pan out a little bit. Let's copy this line and place it at the four corners. One, two, okay, the line is here, good. Four, there's our four corners. And now, instead of you drawing the four um, sides, you can just copy the box and place it at that height. So here's what I mean. What's the height? 212. Oh, two, one, two. Okay. There we go. And that's our construction box finished. All right, now we're ready to draw this um, beautiful spindle. Okay, so let's begin by looking at the plan view again. All right, what do we call this curve at each end? What command do you use to get that curve? Anybody remembers? Fillet. Fillet, excellent. Welcome, Delano. All right, so we use a command fillet to get these curves. But to know the height of it, we realize the front view tells us that it's at a height of 15. So what we're going to do, we're going to fillet now. Let's go on our main line. Let's go on our, sorry, not our main line, but our other construction line now. There we go. And just to make it neat, I'm going to turn down the brightness for these two construction lines. So let's go to transparency. You can put it to 45. There you go. And let's put the next one to about 20. So it's less bright, but it's still more detailed. Okay. Now that we're on our second construction, we're going to go a distance of 15. All right. Distance of 15. Oops. So your AutoCAD should be running perfectly fine because you're not streaming an entire um, session. There we go. 15 up. And then we're going to go across. The exact same distance as the width. Here we go. One second. Oops. Alright, there we go. There we go. So, to help you guys build the confidence, let me tell you some secrets about this. 
This question is from a 2018 past paper. 2018, trust me. The next thing about it is that you would be given one question like this in paper two. So in your paper two question, you're only, be, you're only gonna be given this type of question to complete, along with a simple little sketch like we've been doing in the last class. All right? Now, let me copy the base below, and then I'm gonna fill it. So let's copy the base. Here we go. Excellent. Alright. There we go. And finally, there we go. So, let's use the fillet command now to get the curves. Let's look on the specifications. Did the manufacturer specify the fillet radius? Let's check the, the question. It says, unspecified radii of 3. Alright, and just to prove it, let's check the CSEC question. Things about this page. So the reason why I have to take screenshots of the questions is because it's pulled directly from their website and they have a software that, that doesn't allow anybody to actually screenshot the paper. Alright? So you only can take pictures of the screen. So the, the, the radius is 3 millimeters. Alright? So that means we're going to type fillet. Fillet. We're going to click on radius and then we're going to specify 3 press enter and I'm gonna select the two lines there we go now you might not be able to fully see it but there's your curve everybody see that let's try for the second one fillet so it's fairly small but when I remove the construction line you will be able to see it let's get this one as well there we go so let's zoom in even closer. This is how your drawing should look. Detailed as this. You have our um, sections of construction lines. The, the first construction line is your box. Let's, let's add Zachary. There we go. And then the next construction line is your main line. Let's go over to the next side. Let's specify. So welcome Zachary. Camera on for me. Everybody's camera on. All right. Now we're doing this isometric drawing exactly. All right. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna send the link to this picture in the chat. So if I'm going too fast or too slow, you can just follow along with this picture. Let me send it in the chat. It's a it's a link. You just open in your browser. There you go. All right. Can somebody confirm if they see the picture? Anybody confirm? I specify three again. I'm gonna go to this. Wait, so we're, we're gonna yeah, if if when you click the link to see this image, you can. Cause this is a question. Transform this orthographic into isometric. Yes. All right, good. So if I'm going too slow, you can definitely continue there. But I just want to go at an average pace so persons can follow along with me. So fillet three radius. Two hundred and twelve. Oh, um, this um fifteen. So the radius of this block right here is fifteen. That looks a little bit too much. Fillet radius of three. There we go. Okay. And let's do the opposite for the base as well. So this is a little bit time consuming and there are methods to make time more um, on our side in terms of efficiency, all right, which I'll be going through further in classes, but I want to get the foundational idea behind it. So that here's the reason why I said you should turn on a tangent, because to connect these two lines now, you need to find a tangency. All right, so let's go into these settings. All right, let's go to object snap and let's turn on tangent and also quadrant and let's turn off some lines that we don't need to make sure that it doesn't affect it here we go let's connect those two lines now second okay we can connect the midpoints 
There we go. And that's our curve. So we can remove this line. Now we can zoom out. Let's pan to the next side. Let's do the same idea here. You wouldn't see a line right here since it's curved. So we can remove this line. There we go. Let's go to the next side. Fillet. Radius. Three. There you go. Fillet. Radius. Three. There you go. Let's do that line. Let's connect them. And there we go. Excellent. So, we're not finished though. There's a trivia question right here. What aspect of this box would be hidden? So, try to answer that while I finish the, the last radius fillet. What should I make hidden lines? Anybody? You repeat, sir. Repeat. Here's my base, but it's not everything that I would actually see. So my question is, which lines would be called hidden lines? Probably the ones at the back, sir. The blue ones. The these ones? Yes, sir. Right. These would at be the hidden. Back, yeah. So I'm going to go to layers and then I'm going to move them to a new layer. I'm going to look for a hidden. There I go. But just to make sure I can visually see why they would be hidden, let's turn off the hidden detail. Let's turn it off. So to turn off a layer, you just press the light bulb. There you go. To turn off the other construction layer, you just turn off the light bulb for that one as well. And there you go. So all you have left is just your base. All right. Everybody understand? Let me just trim yes, this. Let me, let me just trim this up a little bit. So now we're gonna move on to the next part of the drawing. So you shouldn't spend so much time on this. It's because I'm running AutoCAD through a browser. That's why I have a less speed. Okay. All right. So let's turn on back our layer and let's continue. Okay, let's turn on back our construction layer. Here we go. The next part of the journal we're gonna look on to draw now. Let's quickly go on a little screenshot. There we go. All right, so we want to draw this aspect now in the middle. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna find the midpoint or the center point really. So type line, go to your construction layer, the one that's below everything. And then now you're going to type line and highlight the midpoint. So one midpoint goes across there. The next midpoint goes across as well. Sir, I want to get on if I type in anything. You won't let you type in anything? I have an idea. It won't let me, like when I type, nothing. Wait, I have an idea. So, because both of us are using the server, Jessica, I'm going to give you a link and you can control my screen, alright? So, let me give but, you... Um, sir, is it okay if I want to have the on to tab right now? Because when I have the on tab, I'm going to do it on computer. Alright, no problem. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a link, guys. So, I want Jessica and Zachary to click on it. And you're going to be able to now control my screen. So you're going to explain to me what's the next step. So click on that link and let me know once you're on it. You should be able to move my cursor and everything. Quickly. Alright. Can you guys move my cursor? So move my cursor. Let me see. I don't see anybody moving it yet. Hold on, 
Alright. Yeah. Alright. So because if you can't do the drawing on your computer, at least you should do it on my um computer. So just control my screen. While you're doing that, um let's quickly go to the next specification. So once you find the midpoint, right, which is right here, you're gonna now start to design this object. Let me give you a quick view of the sketch again. All right. Can you control it now? Yes, sir. All right, excellent. So, yeah, there you go. You can you can control it. Good. So, pause for a second. Let me go back to the sketch. I want to determine now what is going to be done for this midpoint here. All right. Let me show you again. So, we're going to go from the center point, and I want to determine what's the radius of this circle right here let's look at the, the, the dimensions do you see any dimension for the radius of the circle isn't it 22 I think it's 22 right yes it's 22 so quickly let me go to the the, the sketch for you here we go one second okay here we go I want you to look at this for me now this is the exact drawing what would be now the entire let's see so this is a front view and this is a plan view alright to draw this object you must look at the, 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 the plan view to get the height sorry not the height but the distance so it's a distance of 72 from this from the center all right so what i want to do quickly draw a box from the center that has 72 in distance so 70 what 72 overall what can you repeat that sorry you're breaking up I'll, let me play it again you're going to draw a box from the center point right that is 72 in diameter so draw a 72 diameter box or a circle what um a box mm -hmm. use line there you go so the distance should be 72 overall not on both sides mm -hmm. 36 right so zachary are you on the link as well Oh, no, that's what I was saying. Close AutoCAD. I want you to close AutoCAD and click on the link that I just gave you. It's an easier and less computer usage way of you doing the work. So that's why um, I gave you the link. So you don't have to use a lot of processing power to do this. Just click on the link, it opens your Chrome. Okay. Yeah, and you can do the work even though you might not have the speed to. So I just realized I did something wrong. Uh, oh, the what? angle. All right, hold on. Press, can you press the back button, please? Sure, sure. One second, Control Z. Here. Control Z. Control Z. There you go. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I probably went a bit too far back. My bad. All right. So you're gonna go 36 on both sides. Yeah, 36. Wait, that's 236, hold on. Hey, wait, wait. Let me help you. 36. Yeah. Alright, and then you're gonna change. Why did it do that? <laughs> Alright, there you go. So delete that line. Mm -hmm. I think the angle is a little bit off. So one second, Jessica. One Sorry, second. Yeah. Hey. One second, let me show you something. One second. See, your angle is a little bit off. So let me just help you get started. So, alright, if you're using it, I can't use it. So let's pause one second and let me just fix it for you. Alright, one second, one second. One second, Jessica. Let me just fix this for you, one sec. Alright, so let me just fix this line. You're gonna go line, 
specify the angle make sure it snaps in the direction there you go you're gonna type 36 oh you were correct then that means that this angle was slanted so you were correct Jessica there you go Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You work hard. And 72. And 72. Wait. Uh, I think it's frozen for me. Hold on. Alright, there we go. <laughs> 72. 72. 72. And 36. Oops. Second, I said it snapped. Is it snapped? There we go. 36. Okay, so now that we have this box, I wanted to make sure that you understand that it is not incorrect. The reason why it looks incorrect is because you have too many lines that are showing. So I'm going to now turn off this layer or, or hide these lines. Alright, let's hide these lines. Let's move them to a different layer. These should be hidden lines. Remember we said that they were hidden lines. So let's move them to hidden lines. Layer. Okay, good. All right, and now let's delete them. So we're going to delete these lines because too much detail at any given time makes the drawing look confusing. Isn't this less confusing now? Now you, can, now you are able to now draw the detail. Alright, so the next thing now Jessica, let's look back on this. Now that we have the box of 72, right, we're going to now draw the entire height. So let me go on the sketch for you now. One second. Is that okay? Let's continue. So now we're gonna draw the entire height. So we're gonna now go from the base, Jessica. From the base, a height of let's see, 110 minus I think I think that's 30. What's the distance here? 30, right? Yeah. All right. Okay, Google. 110 minus 30. The answer is 97. Now that was dead wrong. What's the answer, Jessica? 80. 80. All right. The internet is very glitchy. So we're going to go 80 upwards from the base here. And I'm going to explain what I'm doing in a moment. All right. The height downward was 15. There we go. So, let me quickly explain what I'm doing, Jessica. If you look closely, right, this starts at the very foundation of the base. So, for us to go up, we must start from the very foundation, which is below here. Do you see that? All right. So, now we're going to go 80... So now we're going to go 80 upwards. Let's draw a line of 80 upwards. 80. And let's zoom out. Here's our line 80 upwards. From the base. Let's delete this line now. Oh. My screen share was paused and I had no idea. Okay. Alex is in my waiting room, I'm not sure why. Okay, now that we have that distance of 80 upwards, right? we want to find the next distance. So from that same base, we're going to go 110 upwards. 110 upwards. My bad. 110 upwards. Alright, so my computer is getting glitchy now. Let me try my best to do this though. Alright. I can't. Okay, there we go. Guys, this is so glitchy. Alright, Jessica, can you control the screen then for me? Because my speed is very slow. 
All right. Thank so, you. I'm, thank you. I'm doing the same thing. All right. So what I wanted to do now, now that we have that that height of 80 going up, you're going to go from a distance now of 20. That specification is so minute. Let me let me go to a better sketch. What's the distance of that? Okay, it is actually supposed to be 30. So you're gonna go 15 on both sides from me, Jessica. So go 15 on both sides. 15 both like where? Like oh, from here. Both sides. From from, the, from the line that we drew. No, 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 from the middle, look on me, right here, right here, so we're going to go 15 on both sides, oh. yeah, so go 15 on both sides, mm -hmm. 15, all right, and then 30, excellent, all right, excellent, thank you, now that we have those two lines, all right i want you so let me just do it because it might be a little bit confusing so let me do it so look at this now we're going to type copy we're going to copy this line to offset here we go yeah you can offset it right and then we're going to just select the midpoint right here go to the extreme there and here and now once we've done that Let's look at what extent the base is. So the base is an exact distance of 72. Let's check that. Let's look at this, the, the, the better sketch. It's 72 across. So we're going to go 72 across from our sketch. Let's zoom in. Line. So 72. Half of 72 is? 36. 36. And then 36 on the next side. Thirty-six on the next side as well. There we go. Thirty-six. Alright. Now, once you have gone 36 on both sides, okay, you are now able to draw this cylinder. Alright, so we're going to draw this cylinder quickly. Okay. So let me just delete these lines now and just draw the cylinder. So that's the idea behind it. Right, this is so laggy. Okay, so look at this one now. We're gonna just use ellipse and just draw the cylinders so you can see it clearly. Because, all right, here we go. The very first cylinder we're gonna draw is going to be a radius. One second. It's going to be. A radius of 26, so a diameter of 26. So ellipse, isocircle. Do I have to the top first, sir? Right. Let me change it. There we go. So ellipse, isocircle, and then once you're finished, we can do the construction box. All right. And what's the, the radius I said? If, it, if, if it's M26, that means what's going to be the radius? The diameter is 26. 13. 13. Okay, good. So that's the first circle. The next circle, let's look on the sketch, is that we have a larger one of 74. So let's draw 74 now. Ellipse. Ice a circle. Specify the center. All right. I think this was seventy-two, right? This was seventy-two. Okay. So if 
if you want a radius of um of half of 74 what's that 37 7 there we go okay all right and the next thing for us to find is what is the smaller radius at the top so the top to which it connects to all right the top to which it connects to is right here and that radius must be smaller so let's look on the sketch now it's a radius of 20 radius of 20 all right and what I'm gonna do I'm going to move this now to the height at which it displaces so let's look at the height now from the base going all the way up to um so from the base all the way up so what's 110 So we're going to specify this circle, we're going to move it, alright, okay Google, what's 110 minus 15? The answer is 95. 95, so I'm going to go 95 up, there I go, alright, let's try to pan this. All right, and now what I can do is to connect the quadrants to each other. All right, there you go. All right, so that's the very first step. Okay, any questions? Oh, I'm gonna try my best to just um, record myself competing it. Um, more steps actually. So, so let me just save this drawing so others can just go on the server and continue the drawing. Let me type isometric classwork. Today's date 1904 Let's go to documents. Desktop, sorry. Let's go to desktop. There we go. All right. And now, if you haven't reached this step, you can just go on the server and download the file and continue from here. All right. Next class will continue. Take care, everybody.